petition, presidential commitment, a permanence at Mars within two decades, and just think of the history of the human species, 100,000, 10,000 years from now, as we look back on big things that leaders have done, and to commit to the movement of the human species from one planet to another. In my calculation, that's a damn big deal. And that's going to be remembered. And it's up to you guys and me to convince leaders to make that kind of a commitment. We have to spell it out exactly what the plan is, how we're going to do it. So we go back to the recommendations of almost 20 years ago, which recommended research on the ISS for exploration, technology, and operations. Now we have an operational ISS, and we can use it to test bed the long-term life support stuff. Government needs that. So does Dennis. Let's have the government do that in a timely fashion to be able to add to uh, his ground testing with the same company that uh, does life support for Orion, and that's Paragon. They're the partners uh, with uh, Inspiration Mars. And then I would propose, of course, we occupy L2 and L1 and build on the robotic control of science robots. We sure have demonstrated how to do that at Mars with long-term life support. Okay. Oh, I got, I got water here. You are? Oh. Christina says I got to speed up. Now, so we need to learn how to construct the exploration module at the space station, and then we do unmanned or manned or commercial visits flying by a comet. Just think of what the Earth guys with their binoculars looking at the tail of the comet and the spacecraft swings by. And through prudent calculation, we're going to crash the upper stage into the comet while these guys are going by. And these people are going to see, whoop. Uh, worldwide, they will see what America has done in developing spacecraft for interplanetary travel. Uh, that's the purpose of doing things between the moon and Mars, develop the spacecraft. So uh, the next one, I believe. This is what I submitted in 2009 to the Augustine Commission. Now you notice I was one lone voice who cured the gap, who cured the money we're paying to the Russians. Sure, it's expensive, but continuing to fly the shuttle once a year, I believe, could have been weighed against what we're uh, kind of losing. All right, so they're now in museums. We can't redo that decision. But at least it was an imaginative one of curing the problems that we're now facing for quite a while. Some of these test bed support at the ISS and the uh, first exploration safe haven. Then we uh, deliver to L1, L2, and L1. And if you're going to deliver something from low Earth orbit to L2, why not do cycling orbits between Earth and the moon to demonstrate what the commercial people can do as we test the propulsion and the guidance system? That's what the government, I think, should do, could do. Why not? They probably won't. That's what they could do. Then we end up with an L1 refueling place. We have a Leo refueling base. We can actually uh, fly by that comet, maybe unmanned, maybe a CubeSat, and we can visit on our exploration interplanetary vehicle. We can visit some of these uh, asteroids. Probably we'll have to slide the visits to uh, Phobos, five, ten years off into the future, just 
that's the way we slide off the uh, cycling orbit delivery. Now the last mission, if we, if we take three missions at Phobos, each one of them a year and a half with three people assembling what has been landed there by us and a lot of international components of the Mars base. I was pretty generous giving three year and a half periods to do this. Whatever is the last one should have a lander. We've got three guys there that know more about what they've been putting together than anybody here on Earth. So they got a lander. Let's land them a couple days a week before the six coming from the Earth. The added benefit of that numerically is we add three to six, and that makes an odd number of people for voting purposes. We've got nine there in the first delivery. Uh, to reach beyond low Earth orbit requires a progressive suite of missions that are vital underpinnings of foundation for a unified space vision. Putting in place and staying uh, as a uh, uh, on track with a unified approach to space must begin now or soon. I need to update this chart because I created it in 09 and uh, we didn't implement some of those. We didn't envision cycling orbits. Can you imagine somebody coming up with a transportation system that Tom Paine put in his 18, I mean 1985, pioneering the space frontier, cycling orbits. Go, go back and look at that report. What has NASA done with cycling orbits since then? Zero. Maybe they're the only ones that think they can be innovative. Some companies certainly adhered and not invented here. We all, we all know that tendency as innovative ideas get stymied. And I suggest that going to Mars means permanence. Just look at the expenses of bringing somebody back. It's monumental. What is our purpose? To build up people to a sustainability, to add to the number of people there. Can you imagine the historical significance of those three plus six people going down in history with the communications we've got right now. No wonder uh, 80,000 people have applied for Mars One under the assumption that it might work. I, I think there are times when, when national and international efforts need to be harnessed together to come up with a system. We can be We'll welcome the assistance of uh, getting our explorers into low Earth orbit via commercial and maybe some other systems. Uh, my, my construction of the lunar base allows Golden Spike a place to go. It'll, it allows uh, Bigelow, somebody to use his inflatables. We're going to have to make a, a crucial decision at some point. Can we afford a rigid exploration module hab of considerable size? I'm sure it would be uh, of greater diameter than the, uh, the hab modules that were delivered to the space station by the uh, space shuttle. Can we afford to have Boeing, Aki, SpaceX? Alania, build those and pay for them? Or is it going to be cheaper to move in a government, revised government improved inflatable structure? That's a big decision we have to make, but it's a, a big one in cost. So let's find out what the comparison between those opportunities is going to come up with. The International Space Station is the ideal place for long duration life support and a safe haven and to launch or to at least do the testing maybe of some of the interplanetary and uh, 
taxi module. 